Starship Flight 9 is just hours from liftoff, and the launch pad is buzzing with final prep. Packed with high-stakes upgrades, daring new objectives, risky flight maneuvers, and mission-critical fixes born from past failures, this launch could redefine everything. Let's break it all down, because this flight could define Starship's future. Launch preparations kicked off with the rollout of Booster 14 to the launch site on Saturday night, following a final round of system-level inspections, hardware repairs, and subsystem verifications. Once at the pad, the booster was lifted using the tower's chopstick arms, precisely aligned, and secured onto the launch mount. The following afternoon, Ship 35, the upper stage, was transported to the site and stacked atop the booster using the same mechanism, completing the fully integrated Starship launch system. With the vehicle fully assembled, teams moved into final readiness procedures, including avionics checkouts, propellant interface testing, hydraulic pressurization, and range coordination. SpaceX is now targeting Flight 9 for no earlier than Tuesday, May 27. Alongside the launch timeline, they've released the full mission profile, highlighting key vehicle upgrades, ambitious tests, risky flight maneuvers, and critical hardware fixes based on past failures. Like earlier flight tests, Flight 9 will launch from Starbase Pad A into a suborbital trajectory to complete several experimental objectives. What makes this flight historic is that it marks the first reflight of a super-heavy booster, Booster 14, which flew on Flight 7 in January and was successfully caught by the tower. To prepare for this reflight, SpaceX conducted thorough post-flight inspections of Booster 14, replacing single-use components while retaining most flight-proven structures and subsystems. Notably, 29 of its 33 Raptor engines are reused from Flight 7. According to SpaceX, insights gained from refurbishing this booster, pre-launch tests, and its Flight 9 performance will help pave the way for faster turnarounds in future launches, ultimately moving toward fully reusable boosters needing little or no maintenance between flights. Flight 9 will be vital for the continued development of Super Heavy, featuring multiple experimental maneuvers to collect real-world performance data on advanced flight profiles and off-nominal scenarios. To minimize risk to ground infrastructure in case of issues during these complex tests, the booster will follow a downrange trajectory over the Gulf of America for a splashdown, instead of attempting a return and tower catch. Following stage separation, the booster will flip in a controlled direction before initiating its boost-back burn. This is achieved by blocking specific vents on the hot stage adapter, forcing the upper stage exhaust to push the booster in a known direction. Previous booster flips went in a randomized direction based on a directional push from small differences in thrust from the upper stage engines at ignition. Controlled flipping reduces the need for reserve propellant in the ship, allowing more propellant for ascent and higher payload capacity. Following the boost back burn, the booster will descend at a steeper angle of attack, increasing atmospheric drag to slow it down before the landing burn. This aerodynamic braking helps conserve fuel and improve landing accuracy. Data from this will refine future super-heavy flight control algorithms. During landing, SpaceX will test an engine-out scenario. Of the three center Raptor engines, one will be intentionally disabled. A backup engine from the inner ring will take over for thrust vectoring. This test is crucial to validate Super Heavy's ability to land safely even in the event of a center engine failure just seconds before the tower catch improving overall system robustness and flight reliability. Near splashdown, the booster will transition to two center engines, then shut down mid-air for a controlled hard splashdown in the ocean. This will closely simulate a degraded three-engine landing scenario and evaluate controllability under reduced thrust conditions. Meanwhile, Ship 35 will continue its mission and will target multiple in-space objectives, including the deployment of eight Starlink simulators, similar in size to next-gen Starlink satellites, serving as a critical validation test for Starship's payload deployment system. These simulators were loaded one by one into the ship's payload bay before its rollout to the launch pad. The Starlink simulators deployed will follow the same suborbital trajectory as the ship and are expected to fully burn up during re-entry. As part of mission goals, a single Raptor engine on Ship 35 will briefly restart in microgravity to demonstrate its ability to reignite and execute a controlled deorbit burn, crucial for precise re-entry and landing on future missions. Apart from these, the flight test includes several key experiments focused on enabling the ship's safe return to the launch site in future missions after passing the intense re-entry conditions. A major part of this testing involves pushing the limits of the thermal protection system, Several heat tiles on Ship 35 were deliberately left uninstalled to stress test exposed areas during re-entry and assess whether the secondary heat-resistant layer beneath them can handle the load in case of tile failure. 
SpaceX is also experimenting with multiple metallic tile alternatives on this flight. One of these prototypes features active cooling, a system that circulates coolant through internal channels to absorb and remove heat. Unlike conventional tiles that passively absorb and radiate heat, active cooling offers a path to safer re-entry at higher speeds, where passive systems may not suffice. Altogether, data from the re-entry phase will be vital for improving Starship's heat shield, which has been a key challenge since early test flights. Functional catch fittings were also added along the ship's sides to evaluate their ability to endure high-speed atmospheric entry and the structural loads of a future mid-air catch. Additionally, the entire tile line received a smooth, tapered edge to reduce hot spots observed in earlier flights, helping prevent localized overheating and structural damage. The re-entry profile is also designed to stress the rear flaps during peak dynamic pressure to test their structural limits. If all goes as planned, about 66 minutes after liftoff, Ship 35 will reignite its sea level raptors for a landing burn, flip vertically, and target a controlled splashdown in the Indian Ocean, concluding the ambitious mission. SpaceX has implemented several design upgrades to Starship based on lessons from previous failures to meet Flight 9's ambitious goals. In Flight 8, Booster 15 faced engine issues during boost back and landing burns. Specifically, two of the 10 inner engines failed to reignite during boost back and one of those same engines failed again during the landing sequence. After a thorough investigation, SpaceX traced the problem to the torch igniters within the pre-burners of the affected engines. These igniters were compromised by thermal stress, likely caused by excessively high temperatures near the ignition zone. Such conditions can damage sensitive components or alter the behavior of propellants, preventing consistent ignition. Post-flight ground testing was able to replicate the issue, and engines on future flights will have additional insulation as mitigation. The failure of Ship 34 during ascent on Flight 8 was also thoroughly investigated and addressed with design and procedural upgrades. The investigation revealed that around five and a half minutes into the flight, a flash appeared near one of the sea-level Raptor engines, followed by a violent explosion that destroyed the engine. The most probable root cause was identified as inadvertent propellant mixing and ignition outside of the combustion chamber. In other words, methane and oxygen leaked or combined in unintended areas, such as the engine bay, feed lines, or attic section, due to a structural or plumbing failure. This unintended propellant leak led to an external fire and subsequent explosion, critically damaging the engine and triggering cascading failures across other engines in the vehicle. Telemetry from the vehicle ended approximately nine and a half minutes into the flight. The autonomous flight safety system then triggered the destruction of the vehicle, ensuring it did not pose a hazard upon re-entry. Following the incident, SpaceX conducted extensive ground testing, including over 100 long-duration Raptor firings at the McGregor facility aimed at replicating the issue and validating fixes. To mitigate similar risks in Flight 9 and future missions, the upper stage engines now have increased preload on critical joints, a nitrogen purge system to prevent propellant buildup, and improved propellant drain architecture. Moreover, the upcoming Raptor V3 engines are expected to incorporate additional reliability upgrades to address these failure modes. SpaceX revealed that although the Flight 8 failure occurred at a similar point in the flight timeline as Flight 7, their root causes were fundamentally different. The Flight 7 failure stemmed from an unexpectedly strong harmonic response within the propulsion system. Excessive oscillations in the engine feed lines, several times stronger than those seen in ground tests, caused severe mechanical stress leading to structural fatigue and rupture of the fuel lines. This allowed propellant to leak into the attic section, where the venting system couldn't expel it fast enough. The accumulated fuel ignited, causing sustained fires that compromised engine operation, resulting in loss of propulsion and ultimately the vehicle. To prevent a repeat of the Flight 7 issue, SpaceX reinforced the propellant feed lines on Ship 34 for Flight 8, optimized propellant temperature management to enhance fuel stability and minimize fluctuations that could contribute to structural oscillations. They revised engine thrust profiles to mitigate resonance and vibrations, and introduced additional venting and a gaseous nitrogen purge system to prevent flammable gas buildup in the attic. SpaceX confirmed that these fixes worked in Flight 8, but new issues emerged, which have been identified and addressed for Flight 9. If all goes well, Starship will complete ascent and reach Seaco or second engine cut off, about nine minutes after liftoff, marking a key milestone for Flight 9. After Seaco, the ship will continue with mission objectives, including Starlink payload deployment, mid-flight Raptor reignition, heat shield testing during re-entry, and a controlled landing burn followed by an ocean splashdown. 
Make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you don't miss the detailed breakdown of Flight 9, coming up right after the mission.